Welcome to a new episode uh, of Better Laravel Way. In here, we're going to be showing you how to um, extract the, uh, you know, uh, database-related concepts into another uh, layer. So, as I mentioned before about the concept of the layer, today we're going to be working with a new type of layer, which I call infrastructure, um, and some people call it data access layer. Um, this is the place where you should be actually writing this logic that is here. This will help you to avoid the problems with those sort of almighty controllers that do everything and they are not reusable and they are not uh, easy to manage in the large scale application. Of course the examples here are very simple but wh whatever I show you I keep in mind tons of controllers, tons of uh, you know different layers because I want to show you like enterprise level stuff, not just you know tutorial of getting stuff done. So, yeah, uh, I will explain you more about what's the problem with this and how to solve it. The issue about this kind of piece of code. Well, at this level, there is only one issue really, and it's violating single responsibility principle. Actually, we violate a little bit more principle here, but let me focus on one. Um, so. What does this controller do, really? Like, every class should have only one reason to exist. Uh, that's what is what does single responsibility says. So, what does it do? What, what is the reason to exist for this class? Well, quite a few, really. Um, you can think about one is to create the user. Um, and it not only knows when to create the user, when the request comes, but also how to create it. So it knows about those eloquent methods. Another thing is uh, it also returns a response. Well, returning the response could be like a bigger scope of responsibility of a controller because when the name, think about the name, like controller, what should it do? It should control, right? So, you know, what should it control? Well, it should control everything that runs in your application under the hood. So by exposing this database concept here, we violate the single responsibility principle. The next thing you're gonna do is to create another controller. Let's say, I don't know, um, another user creation controller. Maybe it's gonna be you know another type of the user or, or whatever. Or maybe it's gonna be another means of communication with the application, maybe through queue. Um, and then you're gonna repeat that logic. You're just gonna come here, copy paste this piece of code and put it somewhere else. And that's a problem because you don't want to repeat yourself. There is a rule called don't repeat yourself. So uh, dry. So we violate that rule as well uh, because, uh, you know, imagine maybe one day you wanna add extra field here. I don't know, maybe a first name or last name or whatever. Now we're going to be going to all those controllers or different classes that actually have this piece of code and change it there. That's the problem because, you know, uh, you go easily out of sync. So whenever you have a repeated piece of code, piece of logic code, you should really extract it to a separate function. So, yeah, these are, these are the problems on top of my head. If you know any more, please let me know in the comments below. In our job, we also focus on solid principles and single responsibility is S in solid. Um, there is another letter, a D, called dependency inversion and actually we also violate that rule, that principle in here. Um, dependency inversion says that higher level classes should not be bothered about the low level details. And right here we tell like exactly how this data is being like saved in the database that that sort of is a problem um so we're gonna talk more about dependency inversion in later in the video i will show you how to actually um, make sure it's dependency inversion not just dependency injection but for now you need to know this never write the code like this